Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, August. You're back early today, sir. I'll be back every day at this time. I'm on a new shift. Will you be sleeping in the daytime or at nighttime from now on? Nighttime. The staff will be pleased. We all admire your patriotism in working in an airplane factory, but it will be nice to get the house back on a normal schedule. What's that? Uh, your fiance is here, sir. Oh, good. Your cousin Edgar is here also. They're in the musical. Thanks. They've changed my shift. Well, uh, how are things at the plant? Shut up. No, Jay, we were just dancing. You're not going to misinterpret a little thing like this, are you, cousin? Why didn't you tell me you were in love with Edgar? I'm not in love with Edgar. We were just having a little fun. You know how that music is. It stirs you all up. I told you to shut up. You're just like all the rest of them, Gloria. It's not me you care about. It's my money. Oh, Jay, stop being so old-fashioned. Oh. Of course I care about you. I'm engaged to you. Oh, no, you're not. You were. Well, you can't mean that. Oh, yes, I can. Well, this is the dirtiest trick I ever heard of. I ordered a mink coat yesterday. Maybe my cousin Edgar will pay for it. But, Jay, you know very well that every cent I have, I get from you. You can speak of that in the past tense also. What? But you can't do a thing like this so... So suddenly a person is entitled to a little notice. Then I will go on paying your allowance for the next 30 seconds. I'm afraid I won't be able to return your ring. I can't get it off my finger. If you ever need any money, I'm sure my cousin Edgar will find a way to get it off. But why do you have to do anything so drastic, Jay? If it's just because of Gloria, you should have been prepared. We never did like her. I always thought she was rather pretty. No. Oh. Sorry, dear. But, Aunt Martha, it's happened to me a dozen times. I'm sick of having people like me for just what they can get out of me. That's why I'm going into the Navy. But, my dear boy, how's this going to alter the situation? Well, in the Navy, nobody will know who I am. I'll just be one sailor among a lot of sailors. I won't be J. Newport Bates. I'll be Seaman Bates. And if anybody likes me, it'll be because they like Seaman Bates and not my bank account. I think you're being very selfish, Jay. You don't seem to care how much you worry me. I beg your pardon, Mr. Bates, but your attorneys are here. Good evening. Good evening, Hello, Mr. Mussolini. Good evening, Jay. 
Well, Jay, there's a mountain of things to sign if you persist in going through with it. I can't for the life of me see why you're doing it. You're a vital war worker where you are. Vital? All I do is take bolts from one box and put them in another. Then I take washers and change them from one box to another. Then the nuts. A six-year-old child could do it. My cousin Edgar could do it. Very well, then. We've done the next best thing for you. We've arranged one of the younger members of our firm, Mr. Beasley's nephew, to go into the Navy with you. With me? Why? Well, you couldn't go alone. Why not? Everybody else goes alone. Well, everyone else isn't the head of a financial dynasty like you are. You either own or control 27 corporations and three entire industries. But you handle all that. They're in your name, Jay. You absolutely must have a legal eye on you at all times. But that's just what I don't want. I want to be free. If I go in the Navy, I don't want anybody to know who I am. But nobody will. Now, Philip will be discreet. Uh, now, please, Jay, this is the least you can do for me. Well... Beaster, tell your nephew we're ready for him. All right, Philip, come in now. Philip? Well, where is he? <laughs> What are we waiting for? Uh, I think Philip stepped down the hall. Uh. Oh, hello. I didn't see you. I, I asked you to wait in the hall. Well, I just looked in here and I saw a saxophone, so I thought I'd try it out. Good horn. Oh. oh well, while Philip was in law school, he played in an orchestra. You know, some people play games and others play polo, and Philip played... Uh, saxophone. Mm. And you think that makes him competent to watch over Jay? Well, Beaster and I are too old to go in the Navy. He looks healthy. Why isn't he in the Navy now? Oh, well, he's been doing some very important legal work for the government. And fortunately for our purposes, the project just failed. I, I mean, it was canceled. Uh, red tape. Yeah. Uh, Philip, uh, Mrs. Neely and Mr. Neely. How you doing? And Mr. Bates. Hello there. How do you do? Hope you don't mind my using your horn. Oh, not at all. Uh, we've been explaining to Mr. Bates that you and he are going to be shipmates. Do you want to go in the Navy, Mr. Norris? Well, He'd I... be delighted. Uh, delighted. Well, then I suppose I'll have to give in. But I feel awfully silly going off to war with a guardian. Well, uh, as long as I'm going to the Navy to take care of you, I think I ought to tell you that I can't swim. I can't either. Well, I guess the only thing for us to do then is just to uh, keep away from the water. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the stars that twinkle when the night's begin. All the sailors sit around and watch the waves roll in. Uncle Sammy hit Miami, and he's got the situation well in hand. Uncle Sammy hit Miami. And the stars and stripes are flying in Miami. Dakota, Minnesota, every state you ever heard of has its quarter. Why, compared to Brooklyn, this is like another wild. I mean, mother keeps writing me. <laughs> Afraid that I'll get spur off. Uncle Sammy in Miami. at the best hotel in Miami. Say, when the Navy took this joint over, do you think they left any dames in the rooms? I don't know. Let's go find out. Now, why would they station us in a place like this? I'm sick of this soft living. Cheer up. Maybe after we finish our training, they'll send us to Iceland. All right, men, get your bags. Inside, on the double. Say, look, fellas, here comes company. Hi, sailors. Hi. Say, this is the kind of place I was built for. Did I ever tell you? I can't stand nothing next to me but silk. Yeah, when silk is next to me, I want something in it. Boy, this reminds me of home. Except, the course, at home, the cow shed's over there. Gee, what a place. I don't like it. Wonder who's in charge here. That's him over there, Chief Petty Officer. I've got to talk to him. 
Uh, pardon, sir, but do you think this is going to work out all right? What do you mean? Well, I mean, this place looks almost too comfortable. After all, aren't we supposed to get hardened up? Oh, I see. Well, we weren't going to start hardening you up until six bells. Oh. But seeing as you can't wait, I've got a nice big storeroom that needs to be swabbed. And this looks just like the crew that can do a real swell job. Square Hathaway, fix that neckerchief. Take that cigarette out of your mouth. Now follow me and I'll show you where you get your gear. You're a very funny fellow. And when I get you alone, I'll have you in stitches. I may even break your funny bone. Get going, I said! Pardon me, old chap. Ain't you hardened up yet? Oh, how clumsy of me. I almost hit you in the face. Hey, kid, you better be careful. You get your feet wet, you're liable to catch cold. Hey, Bill, give us a hand, will you? You want a hand? I'll give you two. Hey! Now, Ella was a dancing girl that started getting fat, and every day brought three more pounds to Ella. Till one day she lost her job just because of that, then to make it worse, she lost her fella. So she sailed to Egypt to forget. How about they liked her so much that she's there yet? If you hear of a girl that can wiggle and shake till that makes you think of a noiva snake, whoa, that's Egyptian Ella. She weighs 220, but they don't care. They like them plenty that way out there. She's got the eye of all the camel encouragers. Why, she does a dance with certain parts down by the River Nile, which make all the boys take their old sweethearts and throw them to the crocodiles. And every sheik in the audience rises and offers his love intense, but they can't get the voice based without giving no sir. Now, she tried to kidnap her once, I am told, but she shook so much that he lost his hold. <laughs> Sorry. The boys stand around, but she plainly states she doesn't carry fig about dates. <laughs> so the sheiky wrote a royal note, signed with his royal fist. Which said because of the dance she did, she was on his royal waiting list. And that's how fame from a song in the world came at last to a Brooklyn Goyle, to our Egyptian eyes. Come on, play some more, play some more.
On the Liberty list. Okay, Fink. Say, Phil, look, I'd rather you didn't go out with me tonight. I got to. But I don't need a chaperone. I, I just want to be one of the fellas. Look, I got a job to do, and that's watching over you. Look, I won't get in any trouble. What do you say, huh? Just tonight, if it... Well, okay, but you got to be in by 11 o'clock. But Liberty lasts till 1. Listen, if you're going to go out alone, you got to be in by 11 o'clock. Nobody gets in trouble before then. Who do you think you are, my mother? If I were, you'd have to be in by 10 o'clock. The outside. That's me, Benjamin Lowe. There's my name, too. Where are we going? Nowhere with you. Oh, now, look, fellas, I know I started out on the wrong foot, but I won't bother anybody. After all, this is our first liberty. Can't we be pals? Look, kid, liberty means that you're at liberty to pick out who you want to go with. And you ain't being tapped. Come on, fellas, let's get underway. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hiya, soldier. Hiya, Marine. Shut up, tight pants. Boy, what a joint. Hey, look at this. We ought to have something like that for a mascot. Hey, I wonder if she'd be interested in improving my morale. Well, what are we slobbering over the picture for? They got her inside in the flesh. Yeah, but the sign over there says two bucks cover. How much dough you guys got? I got a dollar eighty. I'm flat. I've got some money. Well, kid, it he's a bit back. I'd be very happy to take you fellas inside as my guests. Say, chum, we got you wrong. You're okay. How much dough have you got? Yeah, you know, to cover and include refreshments. Oh, I think I've got enough. I... <laughs> Well, I, I had a little luck in the crap game. A little luck? Who have you been playing with, Rockefeller? Well, shall we go in? Shall we go in, he says. <laughs> wow, what a play! What a man! Take your hat, boy. Check me, honey. You can hang me up any place, babe. Say, honey, how do you like to marry me? But I've already got a husband. Well, I already got a wife. Oh, Mr. Beats. Good evening, sir. Hello, Joseph. You don't know me. Don't know you? You're Mr. J. Newport Beats. Please, I don't want anybody to know who I am. And don't give me a good table. Just give me the sort of table you give to anybody. But, Mr. Beats... Shh! Please, just call me Sailor. Yes, Mr. Uh, sailor. Hey, what are we waiting for? Come on, fellas. I've got a table. Let's go, fellas. This way, Mr. Sailor. Fellas, Fred, oh, come on, right over there. Benny. Hey, what's the ceiling on that back roll of yours? Oh, I've got plenty, Benny. You want anything you like. Okay. Mutter me with mushrooms. Give me some pheasant's tails under glass. Yes. And you, sir? Tell me, what is this stuff, escargot? Oh, escargot? It means snails. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You bring me a couple of playwood and some beef stew to eat, huh? Uh, oui, monsieur. That's the limit. For 18 years I've been a head waiter, and this is the first time a customer ever gave me $20 not to recognize him and to give him a bad table. Who did that? Well, the little sailor over there, the one talking to the waiter. That is Jane Newport Bates, the wealthiest young man in America. He used to come here every season. It was before you worked here. But why doesn't he want anyone to know who he is? I don't know. Millionaires are crazy people. <laughs> Cigarettes, cigars. Cigarettes, sir. No, thank you. I don't smoke. I do. Well, go ahead, Benny. Have whatever you want. Give me a carton of dose. Me too, uh, me I'll too. Take a oh. Go ahead. Well, that's all I have, but I can get some more. Never mind. Give me that box of cigars. Yes, sir. Would you care for a cigar? No, thanks. Keep the change. Thank you very much, sir. Honey, with a little encouragement, I'd have your name tattooed across my chest. There isn't enough room. There's five letters in my name. <laughs> uh, would you like some gum or some fruit drops? The fruit drop sounds good. What kind? Oh, any kind at all. These citrus hangs are awfully good. When I'm walking home at night, I'm usually alone. And I just enjoy these all by myself. You know, when you're alone and you have something to do, you don't feel so alone. You won't be alone tonight, dollface. I'll convoy you home. Hey, what about don't me? Don't take the first offer, sure, baby. Sure, wait till all the bids are in. You boys are all so flattering. I don't know which one to go home with. I'll tell you what. I'll pick a number from one to ten, and whoever guesses it gets to take me home. Now start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you must play fair. Four is your number. Five. That's it. I guess you get to take me home. That is, if you want to. Why, sure I want to. Hey, you'd have more fun with those citrus tangs. Well, shall we go? 
Oh, no, I don't get through work till 12. Oh, well, now wait right here. See you at midnight. your favorite pinup girl? Is it Pollock Goddard? Betty Hutton? You're probably a fan of Dorothy Lemour. If you haven't got a pinup girl, why couldn't I be yours? How would you like to take my picture? How would you like a souvenir? You can put it in the locket that you carry in your pocket when I I'd love to have you have my picture Looking at you each time you write I'd love to be the lucky person That kisses you goodnight Get your camera, Jack And step right back While baby poses for you Let the shutter click That should do the trick Cause your baby looks sweeter In 16 millimeter It'll be signed with love and kisses To a guy in navy blue How'd you like to take my picture? We're gonna take some pictures, huh? Hey, look, the joint's changing. It's magic. How about that? Well, what do you know? Wow! Look at that. Oh, boy, hold on. No one in the Marines are the first to hit the beach. Hold still, Goldilocks. The best way, honey. Boy, this is living, huh? Hey, look at that! Oh! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, heaven help the sailors on a night like this. Why can't we get something like this on our ship? You know something? Just looking at you, I can tell a ship's position. Yeah, what is it? Latitude 48, lingerie 32. Here we go again. What will they think of next? Haven't I seen her somewhere before? Sure, in the last issue of Esquire. Miss, would you turn this way, please? Can you picture me alongside a hard reading and improve on my mind? Yeah, vulture and culture. Hey, look, a bicycle built for two. See you later, honey. Look at that. Easy, fella. This is only built for two. Hey, let the kid have his picture taken. Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay, kid, come on. Here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hold it. Hey, he looks just like my old man. Hey, oh, my God. God. Hey, oh. Quit panting. You're shaking my camera. Oh, brother, how'd you like to put in a day's work alongside of her? Hey, day nothing. Give me the late shift. Yikes! Isn't she got pretty hands? Taking the fun out of life, we're covering it up. I don't care, I still... Hey, look at that, fellas. And it ain't even Saturday night. Wow, as soon as I get back from Tokyo, I'm gonna take up plumbing. I'd give a month's pay to be one of those bubbles. It'll be signed with love and kisses To a guy in navy blue How would you like to take my picture? are old friends already, and I don't even know your name. Jay Bates. <laughs> That's a nice name. I'm Teddy Collins. What do you do? I'm a sailor. <laughs> I mean before. Oh, uh, I used to work in a factory. Uh, how long have you been at the Coral Club? Oh, just a few weeks. I came from Chicago. Oh, what did you do there? Same thing. I'm really a singer, but I've never had a chance. You see, if you haven't a lot of pull or a big name, you just don't get anywhere. And I have a mother to support, so I work as a cigarette girl. Your mother's pretty lucky to have a daughter like you. <laughs> well, this is where I live. Would you like to come up for a while? But what about your mother? Do you think we might wake her? Oh, oh, well, she's not here. You know, she's not very well, and I had to send her to a warmer climate. This is one of the warmest climates in the country. Oh. Oh, well, she needs altitude, too. Oh. So if you like to come up, why, we, you wouldn't awaken her. Well, I don't think I'd bet it tonight. My liberty only lasts till one. Oh, well, it was awfully nice of you to take me home, Mr. Bates. I enjoyed it. You know, I have a little confession to make. Tonight, when you and the fellas were playing that game to see who'd get to take me home, well, I cheated a little. You did? You didn't win at all. But I wanted you to take me home. So I fibbed. Well, that's quite a compliment. 
Lucky and some of those fellas are pretty good looking. Not as good looking as you. Uh, say, I might get off tomorrow night. Uh, you think I can call for you again? I don't know. Why not? You must think I'm awfully full. No, I don't. I think you're swell. Please? Well, all right. Good night. Good night. Miss Collins. I mean, Teddy. Yes? Minister One, that's the last time I let you out alone again. What, Phil? Wait till you hear I met her. I met the girl. I knew it. I never should let you go. But she's sweet and beautiful and lovely and, and she's good to oh. her mother. Oh. And she likes me for myself. To her, I was just one sailor at a table full of sailors and I was the one she liked. Where'd you meet her? At the Coral Club. Was she a hat check girl or a cigarette girl? What makes you say that? Before I became a lawyer, I worked in a lot of nightclubs. And it sounds just like the pitch that sort of a girl would throw you. This was no pitch, and she wasn't that sort of a girl. Well, what does she do? Go around picking up sailors? No, she's, uh, she's sort of a, an entertainer. She's got a fine voice. My uncle's gonna love this. The first time I let you alone, you come back hooked. What, Phil? You're jumping to conclusions. She's a swell girl. Well, I'll drop down tomorrow night and take a look at her. Oh, no, you won't. I won't have that. Now, you stay away from her. I know what I'm doing, and I know she's right. Now, you leave her alone. Well, I'm only going to ask her a few questions. That'll offend her. She won't be offended unless she's trying to pull something. If you go down and bother that girl, I'll take my business away from Rutledge and Beaster and tell them it's all your fault. Now, how would you like that? Okay, you win. But promise me one thing, will you? Let me know before I do anything stupid like getting married. Oh, sure, Phil. I'll do that. And now that you guys have got everything settled, can us bridesmaids get some sleep? Da -da 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 Quiet! Come on, Phil, hurry up. Uh, go ahead, I'll be right with you. Guess what happened? What's the matter? I lost my liberty. They claimed I didn't make up my bunk, but I did. You saw me. Sure I did. I'd plan a beef if I were you. I did, but it didn't do me any good. The awful part of it is I got a date tonight. Gee, that's tough. Want me to run over and tell her? No. You're supposed to stay out of this, remember? That was our agreement. Okay, you're just trying to do you a favor. I'll telephone. Well, I guess I'll take in a movie. So long. Got a nickel here someplace. Take your hat, sir. Only one, sir. Yeah, for the moment. Right this way. Sir, or reserve. I beg your pardon, sir. Would you care for a ringside table? Well, I'd rather have a little information. Of course, sir. It's about this uh, Sue Thomas, the girl that sings here. What kind of a girl is she? Oh, very lovely, very refined, a perfect lady. Now tell me about her. 
And I want the real lowdown. Well, she's been working here seven weeks. Very popular. I don't want a financial statement. I just want to know about her personal life. There's never been a breath of scandal about her. Mm -hmm. Take another breath. I can't think of a thing. You're not trying. Well... <laughs> <clears throat> what is it? She's a vegetarian. Uh -huh. Well, I guess I'd better talk to her myself. Which one is her dressing? I guess I'm not allowed backstage. But this is strictly business. You gotta give me something for my money. I suppose I should have that. Right this way, please. Well, hello. Hello. Is that all you got to say to an old pal? That's all. Hmm. Say, uh... How long has she been here? About a month. Mm hmm Do you miss any silverware yet? No. I don't think so. Well, you better keep your eye on it. She'll take anything she can get. She took me for $1,200. Right this way. Come in. Oh, I thought you were my maid. Well, uh... I'm not exactly, but if there's anything I can do to help, I don't want to be too glad to. I'm dressing. <laughs> yes, I see. Uh, Miss Thomas, do you suppose I could have a few minutes? I put out a little newspaper over there to subchase a training base, and uh, I'd like an interview. Some other time. Oh, well, you see, we go to press night, and I know the boys would really appreciate reading about you. You see, uh, you're one of their favorites. Well, what would you like to know? Well, then, first, are you married? No. Ever been married? No. Well, then, uh, maybe you're engaged. Sorry, it's still no. <laughs> Gee, I can't understand that. A beautiful girl like you must have uh, some man in her life. What paper did you say you were interviewing me for? Hot confessions? Oh, well, you know how sailors are. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to shock them. I'll probably be pretty dull reading. Hmm. We'll find something. Uh, what about your parents, actors? No, my father's a banker. <laughs> uh, what bank's he working? He doesn't actually work in any bank. He's on the board of directors of the Fidelity Trust Bank. Yeah? Is that so strange? Well, it's a, it's a bit unusual. Oh, you mean my singing? Oh, as a matter of fact, my parents didn't approve at first, but they don't mind it now, and I love it. I turned my salary over to the Red Cross. <laughs> well, you see, I'd better not print that, because the boys might not believe it. Not important anyway. You know, you're smart. You get a sense of humor, too. I think I like you. Thank you. Uh, I bet we could have a lot of laughs together. I can't imagine what about. Oh, about your father and the board of directors. You know, uh, I come from a very unusual family myself. Royal. But I was kidnapped by the gypsies when I was just a little bit of a child. I'd appreciate it if you'd leave. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you sore. Uh, what are you doing later on tonight? It won't conflict with anything you're doing. Now, will you please go? Go on. Okay, look, I'm, I'm sorry for everything. It's a uh, kiss and make up. Oh. Come in, come in. Arthur, throw him out. Yes, Miss Thomas. Your father asked me to bring his coat. It's getting chilly. All right, sailor. Now look, take it easy. I don't want any trouble with you. Now look, bud, you're gonna get hit. Kind of rusty, aren't you? How long since you threw anybody out? I'm rusty, eh? Hey, boys, give me a hand. Okay, fellas, I'll go quietly. You bet you will. You must feel right at home. The gypsies have got you again. Come on, get out. For goodness sakes. <laughs> hey, uh, was that really Miss Thompson's chauffeur man? Why, sure. He brings her here every night. Swell. She must be on the level. That's a nice girl, a really nice girl. First time I ever saw a sailor happy about that. This is 
so nice. But somehow I can't help but feel a little sad. You do? Why? Well, in a few weeks your training will be finished and then you'll go on active duty and I won't see you anymore. Well, I won't like that part of it. Won't you really? Teddy, I'm in love with you. Oh, Jay. We've only known each other for a few days. Oh, I was afraid you'd think I was rushing things a little. Oh, I don't. I, I mean, uh, with the war and all, people have to rush things. They do? The only trouble is I can't ask you what I was going to ask you because, well, there's something you don't know. Oh, are you married? Oh, no. Well, if you're not married, it can't be very serious. Oh, it's serious, all right. I lied to you. Oh, not out and out, but I let you think there was something that wasn't so. What was it? Well, I told you I worked in a factory. Well, I did, but it's not because I had to to make a living. It, well, I own the factory. I own a lot of factories. Not what you thought at all. I didn't tell you because, well, I wanted you to like me for myself. And, it isn't going to make any difference, is it, Teddy? Well, it is kind of a shock. Well, I'm no different than I was a moment ago. I'm exactly what you thought, only... only I've got $200 million. Well, I'm not going to let that stand in our way. I don't care who you are. There's still no reason why we couldn't be happy together. Teddy, you mean you'll marry me? Of course I will. Oh, boo! Everybody. Hi, Uncle. Well, Philip, what have you got to say for yourself? Just how did this deplorable incident occur? Well, I don't understand why everybody's so upset. She found a girl he's in love with and they're engaged. But who is she and what is she? We know nothing about her. Well, her name is Sue Thomas and she sings at the choral club. She comes from a fine family, got a lot of money, and they're way up in society. And uh, her morals are okay, too. I, uh, found that out for myself. Well, it isn't as bad as we thought. And to top it all off, she's beautiful. You say her family's well fixed financially? Her father's Byron Thomas, president of Fidelity Trust Bank. Byron Thomas? Well, he's a member of my club. Oh, he's a splendid fellow. A very sound man. My dear lady, I'm afraid we became exercised needlessly. Aunt Martha, Uncle Ralph. Oh, my dear James, I'm so pleased. And you, dear, welcome to the family. My dear, I want you to meet my husband. He'll be your Uncle Ralph. I'll just call you Sue. Uh-huh. Why? Oh, uh, you know, uh, Uncle, same family and all, and married to my nephew. Can't very well call you Miss Thomas. I don't see why you should. Her name is Miss Collins. Collins? But Mr. Norris said... Uh, I mean, uh, he was under the impression you were engaged to a Miss Thomas. Well, you see, I was in Miss Thomas' dressing room at the Coral Club, and uh, she was there at the, at the club, at the Coral Club. That's the same place. Beaster, perhaps you can translate what your nephew's trying to say? Now, try to be more explicit. Don't mumble. Oh, it's all very clear now. You see, Jay's engaged to Teddy. Teddy? I didn't know you knew her. Oh, we met a long time ago in Chicago, when Mr. Norris used to play a saxophone in Ray Albany's band. Miss Collins, uh, do you live in Florida, or are you just down here on a vacation? Oh, no, I work here. Indeed. Uh, what do you do? I sell cigarettes at the Coral Club. <laughs> well, see, she sells cigars, too. Now, you just walk among the tables and call cigars, cigarettes, and if you stand close enough and give them a smoky look, it's good for a 50-cent tip. What I want to know is, how do you look to get $200 million? It's the same as the 50-cent look, only you've got to use it on the right guy. Well, here it goes. You moved right in. La, 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 la. Hit me light, an ice-cold shower. You moved right in. Magic power. I knew the minute I saw that silly grin. I knew it wouldn't do to say no, baby. So, baby, you moved right in. Seem to have no qualms about me. Nice, how you feel. You just put your arms about me. 
slam the door in somebody's face, it means I don't want to see him. You don't know it, but you you want to see me. I got good news. Oh, you're leaving town? Better than that. I've got $5,000 for you. Fine, you can put it on the table on your way out. Well, it's not uh, quite as simple as that. See, first you got to give up Jay. Whose idea was that? His family's. They can't think we're very much in love at those prices. Hmm. What about $10,000? I was planning to spend that much on my trousseau. Look, I'll be frank with you. I can go as high as 25. Would you go as high as 30? Well, yes. Is it a deal? No, I just wanted to see how it would feel to turn down that much money. Say, you're in the big time, aren't you? You start out by squeezing nickels and dimes out of a saxophone player, and you end up by knocking off one of the biggest fortunes in America. And I owe it all to you. I used to be one of those sweet, simple-minded girls that believed in love and fairy stories. But I grew up when I found out you were proposing marriage to me when you had a wife and child. Well, what did I have? One wife and one child. Both hungry. 
I donated your $1,200 to fill their faces. Ah, you had a wife and child. When? At the time of our great passion. I thought your child needed milk more than we needed a car to elope in. Look, I don't care what you did with the money, but never mind the alibis. I don't care whether you believe me or not. That's what I did with it. Oh, sure. A strange woman comes up and says she's my wife, and you hand her twelve hundred dollars. Oh, it didn't happen quite that way. That band leader of yours introduced me to her. I might not have turned the money over even then, but your child kept looking at me with those big eyes. Now, listen. Say, well, he did give me a raise just about then, didn't he? Hundred dollars a week for twelve weeks. Hey, that adds up to twelve hundred dollars, doesn't it? Excuse me, I'm breaking in a new girl. Well, look, Teddy, don't you see what happened? Ray framed me. You know, if I got married and settled down, I'd quit the band. That was a phony wife and child. Don't bother. But look, don't you see that changes everything? We split up over misunderstanding. After that time, you did love me, didn't you? You're really a tin horn, aren't you? First you tried to buy me off, and that didn't work, and now you're trying love. Well, that won't work either, Philip. Hey, Teddy, wait a minute. Oh, Teddy. you again, huh? Look, fellas, you can't throw me out. I'm a customer. Yeah, tough one. We'll solve it, yeah. Come on. Yeah. You'd think that guy'd quit trying. That's what I like about the Navy. They never give up. That boy will probably end up an admiral. Uh. Jay, Jay, you sleep? Huh? I was. I want to tell you about Teddy. What about Teddy? Well, this is important. Are you sure you're awake? Well, sure I'm awake. What is it? Well, Teddy and I are in love. What? Yeah, I just left her. She said she was in love with you? Well, uh, she didn't admit it, but after all, she's still sore at me. Then what are you talking about? Coming here in the middle of the night, waking me up with things that aren't so. Well, it will be so as soon as I talk her into it. What it boils down to is this. You're just trying to take her away from me, see? But it won't work, because I know she's in love with me. Well, how could she be? What's so impossible about that? Well, because she's in love with me. You're crazy. This is a mean trick, Phil, and I won't forget it. From now on, you and I are washed up. And how would you guys like to finish your argument without any teeth? Say, Phil. Hey, Phil. How do you like that guy? Hey, what's all the racket about? What's up? He is. So are you. And brother, I'm getting sick and tired of this. And I'm going to kick some of this insomnia out of you. taking a shower. He's not there. Oh, well, maybe he's fixing some hot milk out in the kitchen. Phil? He's not in there, either. Oh, would you like to look in the closet? You mean he's not here? No, why should he be? Oh, well, I... I didn't mean that I, I... He wasn't... Jay, I don't know what Phil's told you, but there's no need to worry. I knew him a long time ago, but that's all over. I'm engaged to you now. Thanks, Teddy. Gee, I don't know how to apologize for breaking in here like this. Oh, that's all right. Besides, I'm flattered to know that you're that jealous. You better run along now before they miss you. It'll be too late for that. Well, goodbye. Good night. 
You're swell. Well, I guess I won't see you for a few days. What do you suppose they'll do to you? Well, they can't break me. I'm as low as they get. And it's not serious enough for the firing squad. It'll probably be just something in between. Well, I'll, I'll call you when I know. Bye. Night. We found him coming out of a dame's apartment. He claims the whole thing happened to him in a dream. Yeah, I walk in my sleep sometimes. Yeah, when you went past me, you were running in your sleep. You ought to get at least 20 hours extra duty for this. Oh, but you won't mind. You can dream it never happened. Take him away. Come on, bub. <laughs> I look around, I see you carrying a bucket. You know what I think I'll do? I think I'll give you one for Christmas with your name on it. Oh, no, thanks. This is fine. The handle just fits my blisters. Hey, that character ain't normal. He ain't griping enough. Holy mackerel. Hey, you guys, do you know who I've been bunking with? A real live millionaire. No kidding, look, here's a picture of the little guy in the paper. It says he's gonna be married. And here's what else it says. Jay Newport Bates, who inherited $200 million from his father. $200 million. <laughs> from his father, Skyler Bates III, will be married Wednesday next, according to a society... Let me see this. How do you like that? These newspapers are always spilling something. I'm scared some day that it's going to leak out that I'm poor. I knew he wasn't normal. Stop making cracks about the little guy. He's my pal. Cracks? Who's been making cracks? I've been admiring his character. And me bawling him out just because he made a little bit of noise at night. You know, sometimes I think I'm unreasonable. I'm going to apologize to him right now. Hey, I'm going to do it. Hiya, pal. Say, you've been swabbing long enough. Let me take a turn. Give me that bucket. I'm going to help you. Now, wait a minute, fella. You need this chocolate bar. You need it for strength. So then you get him a cherry. He's all wore out. I'll get it. Look, I appreciate this very much, but I've only got two hours more extra duty. I can finish it. Oh, but my dead body, you relax. Then we're going to spend a weekend together having a good time. Oh, well, gee, if you haven't anything definite to do, why don't you come over to my house and give me a party for my girl? You got a house down here? What's the matter with that? Is there anything funny about having a house? No, For no, myself, it's... I'd be delighted if it ain't putting you to an imposition. Oh, I'm glad to have you. I accept with pleasure. RSPV. Say, kid, I already got a date. Can I bring her with me? Oh, sure. All right, you guys, let's help him. Come on. Get the swabs and the buckets up there and clean up the rest of the place. I'm going to massage the kid's shoulders a But little. I don't need any massage. That's all right. Boy, are we in for it. Hello there, mate. How you getting along? All right, I hope. I beg your pardon, Mr. Norris. Mr. Bates is not at home. Well, you better look again, I guess. I mean that he's not at home to you, sir. Oh, he said you'd know why. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, I really can't see Miss Collins. Mr. Bates said very clearly that you were not to enter, sir. Oh. Well, then will you take a note to Miss Collins? No, sir. And if you now pardon me, I'd like to get out of this draft. You get out of here. Go on. 
Well, I admit it's rather an unusual way for a fellow to make You get away from me, you, you fiend. If you touch me, I'll have you arrested. Look, I'm afraid you got the wrong impression of me. You stay I... away from me. We're not alone in here, you know. All I have to do is scream and somebody will come in. Look, why don't you put down that chair and relax? I can explain everything. Oh, no, you don't. Rather. Well, you know that diamond necklace of hers. She doesn't keep it locked up because it's so valuable. It's just that it's not shatterproof glass. And that pearl bracelet. <laughs> and can you imagine? She got it for 365. Shh, shh. Somebody's asleep. <laughs> or else she passed out. I don't think I've ever met her before. Oh, this girdle is killing me. It keeps creeping up. Oh, boy. That feels better. And I don't mind telling you it looks better, too. Come on, kiss. Hello, Teddy. Hello, Teddy. Hello, girl. Oh, I think your fiance's just darling, Teddy. Thanks, so do I. Teddy. What? <laughs> Gee, Teddy, I had to see you. Does the Navy know you're wearing that hat? Well, it was... Oh, <laughs> it's not mine. I want to tell you about Ray Albany. Oh, I'd much rather hear about your wife and child. How are they? I tell you, I haven't got a wife and child. Now, you listen to what I've got to say about Ray? You better put that hat on first. If anyone comes in, I'll have to introduce you as my sister. Look, I was going to get Ray down here to explain to you himself about that wife and child gag, but I can't do it. He's over in Italy entertaining the troops. <laughs> How convenient. Well, it may take a little time, but if you just call off the wedding for a couple of weeks, I'm not going to let you throw yourself away on Jay. Philip, darling, when a woman marries a man worth $200 million, the term is not throw yourself away. It's amalgamate or merge. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> now, what do you say? Well, as an indoor sport, it's not bad. But it's still not going to get you anywhere. Phil, you come out of there. That'd be hard to explain. Teddy, I didn't know you were in here, too. Well, I didn't know he was here. I just stepped in and out he jumped. What are you up to, Phil? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. What's that on your face? My face? Something on my face? Oh, I <laughs> guess I must have cut myself shaving. He didn't get that from me. Oh, well, we might as well come out with it. I just gave the bride a little kiss, Jay. I figured next week everybody would be doing it, and so what if I did jump the gun a couple of days? There's something wrong with him. He ought to be locked up. I don't want you around here, Phil, and you know it. Get out. You mean I can't stay for ice cream? This way, sir, please. That perfume you're wearing, it drives me mad. And there's some sort of a cure they can give a man like that? I want to explain exactly what happened. I don't want you to tell me anything. Let's forget it. Let's go back to the pool. But he must have put that lipstick on himself. Yeah, I, I guess he must have. Good day, sir. Oh, Mr. Norris, I'm glad you came. Well, I'm not coming. I'm going. Going? Why? Jay told August to throw me out. Nonsense. I won't have it. You'll stay as my guest. Do you understand that, August? Yes, madam. Uh, please come with me, Mr. Norris. I told you to show Mr. Norris out. I did, sir, but your aunt let him back in again. Well, <laughs> your aunt asked me to stay. She said the party wouldn't be any good without me. Excuse me, I think I'll put a bathing suit on. I uh, guess I'll be running along, too. See you later. 
Teddy says that Phil doesn't mean anything to her, but I've got a feeling she was just trying to convince herself. Oh, I think Teddy hates him. But he was kissing her. You can't blame her for that. The other night he broke into my dressing room and tried to kiss me. He's a Jack the Ripper. But there was something between them before. I've got a feeling there's something there now. Oh, really, Jay, I don't think you have any right to be suspicious. Well, if Teddy does like Phil, that means that she's gonna marry me for the same old reason. Money. I know just how you feel. I've always had the same problem. You have? It's no different with a girl who has money. First time it happened to me, I was 16 years old. He was a count. A romance center when he found out I wouldn't be able to sign checks until I was 21. Hey, kid. Oh, hello, Benny. Hi. I'll see you later, Jay. Say, kid, my girl's gonna have to leave. Oh, I'm sorry. That's too bad. Yeah, we were penciled in for a romantic weekend, but Dopey here had to show up. How do you do? He's my fiance. He's not much to look at, but all the good men are in the service. Besides, the guy owns a chain of lunchrooms. He's got some dough. Doesn't he mind the way you talk about him? No, nah, he's as deaf as a post. Ain't you, bud? It is a lovely place. Well, I'm, I'm sorry you can't stay. I'd sure like to, Mr. Bates, but Henry here wants me to have dinner with his family. Bye, sweet. Bye, baby. Ring me up when the old boy leaves town again. Come along, Henry. Oh. Did you thank your cousin for taking care of you while I was out of town? I sure did. Goodbye. It's a panic the things people say in front of that guy. Nobody holds back nothing. Benny, I'm going deaf. You mean my voice is fading out on you? No, I'm just gonna make people think I am. Oh, if you want to pull a gag, let's give somebody no, a hot No, 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 I'm serious. If I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna find out whether or not there is anything between Teddy and Phil. Oh, is there some hanky-panky going on? I don't know, but if... They think I can hear, well, then they'll talk frankly in front of me. Ah, it'll never work. It's one thing for an old Joe like him to lose his hearing, but you're too young. They'll never believe it. Oh, no. You see that, Benny? They'd believe me if something happened, I could pull off that thing. Can you die? I can't even swim. Well, how are you gonna hear them if you're dead? Well, you can throw me a life preserver a minute I fall in the water. It'd be easier to get another dame. Well, here I go. Well, gee, I just happened to think of something to clear everything up. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. You were too busy thinking about other things, such as smearing lipstick all over your face. No, but look, all we have to do is go down in the base and look up my record, and they are sitting black and white. No wife, no child. What does that prove? You could lie to the Navy the same way you lied to me. You don't think I'd lie under oath, do you? I'm sure of it.
look what you've done. Oh, that's only the second time. He'll be up again. Look, we'll both save him and split whatever we get out of it. Okay, okay. Listen. Well, let me help. Blow you the hard work, son. Thanks, Benny. What are you doing in there? Kid, we won't let nothing happen to you. It's you're all over a barrel. What happened, Benny? Swim? Gee, how do you feel? What? I said, are you all right? I can't hear you. My ears hurt. Shake your head. Maybe there's water in your ears. Somebody say something. What's the matter, kid? Can't you hear? Huh? The kid's deaf. Well, maybe we better get a doctor. Something's wrong. We better get him up to the house. Ain't it tragic? Just think of all the beautiful music the kid'll never hear. If you just wait here, I'll see if he's ready for you. Quiet. How did we get called into a case like this? All the other doctors are attending a convention at Palm Beach. Convention? I didn't know of any convention. It's the American Medical Association. We weren't invited. Well, I see what you mean. Come right in, gentlemen. He's ready for you. My wife, Mrs. Neely, and Miss yes. Collins. Dr. Effrington and Dr. Spender. That's Mr. Bates, but there's no point in introducing you because he can't hear you. <clears throat> I think perhaps we'd better be alone with the patient during the examination. Oh, yes, of course. One, two, three, four. Can you hear me, Mr. Bates? No reaction. Damn. Yeah, that's obvious. Well, we'd better examine him anyway. Now, where's that light? Can't find it any place. My, those are pre-war golf balls. Where'd you get them? I don't know. I didn't know they were in here. You don't say. Well, let's look some more. Maybe you got some others. No. No more here. <laughs> oh, what's this? Well, that or I use that for siphoning gas out of one car into another. I see. <clears throat> well, I think I got a light in my bag. J. Newport Bates. I think this is the break we've been waiting for, Effrington. Well, let's hope we can keep him to ourselves. You know, these rich people are always calling in specialists. Hmm. Uh-huh. Hmm. Did you find something? Huh? Oh, no. I always do that. Impresses the patient. Hmm. Uh-huh. Hmm. Well, you don't have to impress him. He's deaf. <coughs> oh, look at him wiggle. I haven't hurt him a bit. Well, I don't see anything wrong there. What do we do next? I'll take a look at his skull. Might be a fracture, you know. That's right. Falling from that height. No. No, nothing here. <laughs> Think we should call in a barber? Oh, no. <laughs> Nobody's going to carve this little pigeon but us. Well, I'm frank to say, I don't know why he can't hear. Well, I suppose he'll expect some treatment, though. They always do. You, uh, you don't suppose that... Hmm, couldn't do any real damage? No, no, not that. How do you like that? Yelling before he knows what we're going to do with it. <laughs> well, what are we going to do with it? Uh, uh, put it up his nose and blow a little air in. How do we know it won't help him? No, 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 I don't want that. The crybaby type. Well, don't antagonize him if he doesn't want it. Don't give it to him. Besides, there might be some gas left in it anyway. Well, I guess we're all done. You're going to be all right. All right. Well, what's the procedure? I'd say we should treat him about three times a week. Oh, let's make it four. I'm behind in my income tax. Four it is. That leaves us two days a week for our small animal practice. Well, goodbye, Mr. Bates. Goodbye, Jay Newport. Come! I don't know what I'm knocking for. The doctors say that you can't hear. Oh, messy, messy, messy. I've been picking up after you ever since you were in knee pants. I always hoped you'd grow up, but it seems to me that you're getting worse. You've got lots of messy little habits, leaving your clothes all over the floor, never capping the toothpaste, and the newspaper's always turned inside out when you get through with it. You know, I'd have quit long ago if I weren't making such a good thing out of the household bills. Well, the doctors say that you've got to get lots of rest. <laughs> That's a laugh. You've been resting all your life. I'm the one that should rest. Well, it's going to be a relief not to have to say yes, sir, and no, sir, anymore. From now on, it's going to be yes, bird brain, or no, bird brain. August. Now what? Don't bother closing the draperies. Oh, so I shouldn't bother closing the draperies. Why didn't you tell me that before I closed them? August, would you ask Mr. Norris and Miss Collins to come up here, please? 
Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I happen to be going downstairs, so I will. But don't have any more tantrums with that pillow, bird brain. Hey, Teddy! Teddy! Look, you're not gonna go through with the marriage now that he's deaf, are you? Jay has lost his hearing, not his money. Darling. Hello, Phil. Gee, Jim, I'm awful sorry about what happened, but it was... Well, I guess there's not any sense saying he can't hear me anyways. Uh, sit down, Teddy. Sit down, Phil. When something like this happens, you realize how silly it is to be on the outs with anybody. Teddy's made a choice between us, and I can't see why we all still can't be friends. Well, uh, I don't think I could stand being a family friend. You see, it's gonna hurt too much watching your sad little face. Sad? Why should Mrs. J. Newport Bates be sad? Well, it's bound to get you. Jay's a swell guy and all that, but he's about as romantic as the biannual statement in the Wall Street Herald. Personally, anything connected with Wall Street fascinates me. Hmm. You know, he must be curious about what we're saying. Maybe we'd better do something to amuse him, huh? Why don't you show him your two faces, dear? I'd rather show you a little common sense. Did you ever stop to think about what married life is going to be like with Jay? Breakfast in bed. Hairdressers, shopping, cocktails, dinner, then the theater, or maybe a party. What are you going to do then to entertain yourself? Count his money? Either that or play marbles with diamonds. Have you a cigarette? No, I guess I left mine downstairs. Oh, oh, would you like a cigarette? Thank you. Bill, how about... Phil? No, thank you. No? Of course, I don't deny that it's going to be pleasant to be married to a man with money. Especially for someone like me who's never had any. But money's the least important thing about it. I'll get it for you. Gee, the mirror's broken. That means bad luck. I could have somebody watch over you for the next seven years. I'll have someone. And I couldn't possibly have anyone better. And the wonderful part about it is, I learned to love Jay long before I ever knew he had a nickel. I thought he worked in a factory. And even that would be all right. I couldn't ask for anything more than a little three-room cottage with a picket fence around it, and Jay to come home to me. And maybe later on, a little baby boy. Oh, Ned. Look, uh, if I had my saxophone here, I'd play hearts and flowers for you. Who are you trying to impress? He can't hear you, and I know you. You're just a bad loser. And I think it's a mean trick to talk this way when Jay can't hear you. And if he could, he'd throw you out of here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Jay, you can hear. I've been able to hear right along. What? I wasn't deaf. I was just pretending I was deaf so I could find out about you and Teddy, and I have. I hated to do this, but it was worth it to hear what you said about me. <laughs> I guess that means you heard what I said about you, too. You bet I did. Mm -hmm. Well. I guess the show's over for today. Longer than that, and I'm telling you one thing, you better stay away from Teddy. I guess you're right. I can't compete with you. You've got what she wants, and nothing I can say will do any good anyhow. So, I guess that's it. Oh, and, uh, Jay, be good to her. And if she cries, wipe her eyes with $1,000 bills. This is your third bottle, sailor. Still feel all right? Never felt better in my life. <laughs> but I'm gonna hate myself in the morning for doing what I'm doing tonight. I wanna scrub that deck, give the mop a shove. My mouth is gonna feel just like motorman's glove. And when that pet peeve officer greets me, I know I'll be a horrible sight. I'm gonna hate myself in the morning for what I'm doing tonight. I got that woozy woozy wonderful feeling. I'm gonna get as high as a kite. 
I'm gonna live tonight. I'm gonna shout and sing. If I wake up in the morning with my head in a sling, I got a gal that needs to be told off. And boy, I'm gonna tell her off right. I'll hate myself in the morning for doing what I'm doing tonight. But I love it for doing what I'm doing tonight. Mmm, bubbles. For doing what I'm doing tonight. Say, you're pretty. Gee, you are pretty. Woo -hoo. What am I waiting for? Hey, Rosebud. Do I look like a fellow with a wife and child? What are you talking about? Well, I've been told so many times I've got a wife and child, and now I'm going to get one. I may have to wait a little while for the child, but uh, I want to get started in the wife department right away. Will you marry me? <laughs> You're drunk. So what? Will you marry me? I've got to go. I forgot. My mother's waiting up for me. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I got talent, too. Did you ever hear a mama duck call a little ducks? Wee, 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 wee. Hi, Doc. Uh, Oh, boy. A wife and child. Uh, pardon me, madam. Are you married? My husband is Commander Kinsey. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. Hey, yes. you adjust the peace? Yes. Come on, I want to get married. Well, uh, where's the bride? Well, uh, one thing at a time. Don't rush me. I just want to have you along when I find her. You mean you haven't even chosen a woman? Well, gee, it's only 9 o'clock. When are you coming around waking people up and ringing the doorbells and let me get in the, uh, Wait till I get my coat. What was the name of the orchestra leader that Norris fellow used to play with? Ray Albany. Why? Piece about him here in the paper. Captured by the Germans in Italy. He was? Yeah. Seems he was over there entertaining the soldiers. The picture of him here. But that's his wife and child. Yes, yes, that's what it says. Albany in happier days with wife and child. Jay, Jay, that's his wife and child. Well, what about it? Well, it's Phil's wife and child. No, no. Albany in happier days... I thought they were Phil's wife and child, but they're Ray Albany's. Well, that makes sense. You don't understand. He pawned off his own wife and child on me and said they were Phil's. Odd sense of humor. What is all this? Well, calm yourself, honey. What are you trying to say? But that's just what Phil's been insisting all along. We were framed just so he'd stay in the orchestra. But I still don't see what you mean. Oh, Jay, I know that you don't, and I'm terribly sorry, but I haven't got time to explain. I've got to go. But... Where are you going? Fine, Phil. Jay, I hate to say this to you, but I love Phil. You told me you loved me. You said so. Remember when you thought I couldn't hear? You remember you talked about the little picket fence yes, in the White I House? Yes, I remember. But, but, Jay, I knew that you weren't deaf. You gave yourself away. I was just after your money. I knew all along that you were rich. Again. Oh, Jay, I'm sorry to hurt you this way. But I want you to know that even if I didn't love you, I would have made you a good wife. Goodbye, Jay. I knew she was that type. I sensed it. But for the type, she's attractive. Ralph, this is terrible. The thirteenth time it's happened to me. I wish I didn't have any money. I think I'll give it all away. Now, Jay, there's no sense in going all to pieces. Not feasible anyway. Nobody take your money with taxes the way they are. See who that is, Ida. Sue, I just had to see you. Why, Jay? You're the only one I can talk to. It's happened again. Teddy was going to marry me for my money. You poor boy. I don't know what to do. I think maybe when the war's over, I'll be a monk. I know now I'll never find a girl who isn't trying to take me. Maybe I'd better go. Oh, no, button me up, Ida. We can't do much talking anyway. Mr. Bates has gone deaf. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'm not too sorry for him. Shame on you, Miss Sue. Well, he's always suffering because some girl's after his money. But he asks for it. Why does he go with Cigarette Girl? If he was smart, he'd go with someone like you who's already got money. Then he'd know where he was at. He evidently doesn't think I'm attractive. You is the prettiest thing in Miami. You drive all the men folks crazy. Oh, now, Ida. You does. Remember that big sailor who chased you all around the dressing room until they had to throw him out? I guess I'm not Mr. Bates' type. Who does he think he is, Rochester? Well, he's not bad looking. I think he's kind of funny looking. No, he isn't, Ida. He has awfully nice eyes. Why, Miss Sue, you sound like you might be stuck on him. Oh, no. You are. You're blushing a little. Well, all right, maybe I do like him. 
Well, this sure beats all. I thought when you fell in love, it would be with some big, snorting, handsome fella. Who said anything about being in love? <laughs> well, if you ain't in love, you're sure trembling on the brink. I know you. Darling, just think I never would have known if I hadn't come here tonight. Known what? Why, that you're in love with me. You said he couldn't hear. Oh, I can hear, all right. I was going to tell you, only you started talking. I couldn't resist listening. I'm certainly glad I did. I never would have found out you're anything more than a friend. That's for you, friend. That was a low-down, cheap trick. Now get out of here. Don't be embarrassed, Sue. Who cares how we found out, just so long as we did? I care. Now get out of here. Sure, I've got a lot of things to do. I've got to arrange the biggest engagement party this town ever saw. You better not try anything like that. Remember, I heard. Joseph, I want to take over the whole place for a party tonight. I'm inviting all the boys from the base. They are reservations. But I've got to have it, Joseph. This is an engagement party. I'd like to oblige you if it were possible, but they are regular patrons. Of course, you are a patron, too. One has to think about that one. What has to be fair. After all, why shouldn't you have the same rights as other people? I think it might be done. In fact, it will be done. With the greatest of pleasure, consider it my engagement present to you. That's very generous of you, Joseph. Sorry, but the place has been taken over by a private party. Well, oh, it wasn't I'm glad to see you. I thought you were never coming. I've been looking all over town for a friend of mine, a, a sailor. I know. He is here. He is? Of course. Follow me. Okay, baby. Your fiance is here, see, see, Mr. Bates. Oh, but she's not... not the one. What? No, I'm marrying Sue Thomas. Oh, I didn't know. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Teddy. Excuse me, Mr. Bates, but you were engaged to Miss Collins, uh, were you not? Oh, yes, that was earlier today. Uh, that's what I mean. I knew there was something there in the past. Uh, Jay, have you seen Phil? I've been looking all over for him. Well, no, I haven't. I'm terribly worried about him. I'm afraid he'll do something desperate. Oh, he won't do anything crazy. You better sit down and let me get you a drink. <laughs> You don't say! 
You don't say. You don't say. Who was it? He didn't say. No reply. Night shades falling. Hear him sigh. No we. Why are you, you old witch? Empty spaces and meet his eyes. Empty arms outstretched. He's crying. <laughs> Swampland, searching for you. As if you are lost there, let me be there too. Three, four, halt! Two, the smoke and flame. I've got to go where you are. For no place can be too far. Where you are, hey, to no chains can bind you. If you live, I'll find you. Love is calling me. Hello? <laughs> That cave in a small puppet, I'll never find her. For if you are lost there, let me be there too. She must be using vanishing Kareem. <laughs> Love is calling me. I've got to go where you are. Darling, I knew you'd come to the party. Well, that still doesn't mean I'm going to marry you. Can't hear a word you're saying. You're talking in my bad ear. Hey, uh, what's going on in there? Oh, it's a big party, wedding party or something. Oh, that's fine. We're a wedding party, too. Yeah, a guy named Jay Newport Bates is giving him. A rich guy. Oh, I know him. I know the girl he's marrying, too. I'm gonna kiss a bride. Now, don't go in there, big boy. You'll forget what we were going to do. No, I won't. I just want to kiss the bride and be right back out again. Hold those as a deposit. Uh, don't go away, shorty. It's no use. The place is filled up. Look out, fellas. Hey, buddy. Hey, where are you going? I'm gonna kiss the bride. All this. <laughs> I'm gonna kiss the bride. Anybody want to do it in the barn? You want to do it in the barn? No. I'm gonna kiss the bride again. Man, see what kind of a guy you're marrying? He won't even fight for you. Oh, Bill, I can't hold out on you any longer. You're the one I want. I am? Well, all right, can you get me? <laughs> Sorry to break up your party like this, uh, pal, but uh, the lady seems to prefer me. I'm doing about it? No. <laughs> well, all right, then. He's awfully violent, but most girls like masterful men. They do.
sorry. You're... The boys stand around, but she plainly states she doesn't carry fig about dates. So the sheiky wrote a royal note, signed with his royal fist, which said because of the dance she did, she was on his royal waiting list, and that's how fame from a song in the world came at last to a Brooklyn girl, to our Egyptian eyes. Come on, play some more, play some more. Okay, Fink. Say, Phil, look, I'd rather you didn't go out with me tonight. I got to. But I don't need a chaperone. I, I just want to be one of the fellas. Look, I got a job to do, and that's watching over you. Look, I won't get in any trouble. What do you say, huh? Just tonight, if it... Well, okay, but you got to be in by 11 o'clock. But Liberty lasts till 1. Listen, if you're going to go out alone, you got to be in by 11 o'clock. Nobody gets in trouble for then. Who do you think you are, my mother? If I were, you'd have to be in by 10 o'clock. The outside. That's me, Benjamin Lowe. There's my name, too. Where are we going? Nowhere with you. Oh, now, look, fellas. I know I started out on the wrong foot, but I won't bother anybody. After all, this is our first liberty. Can't we be pals? Look, kid. Liberty means that you're at liberty to pick out who you want to go with. And you ain't being tapped. Come on, fellas. Let's get underway. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hiya, soldier. Hiya, Marine. Shut up, tight pants. Boy, what a joint. Hey, look at this. We ought to have something like that for a mascot. Hey, I wonder if she'd be interested in improving my morale. Well, what are we slobbering over the picture for? They got her inside in the flesh. Yeah, but the sign over there says two bucks cover. How much dough you guys got? I got a dollar eighty. I'm flat. I've got some money. Well, get it, he's a bit back. I'd be very happy to take you fellas inside as my guests. Say, chum, we got you wrong. You're okay. How much dough have you got? Yeah, you know to cover and include refreshments. Well, I think I've got enough. I... <laughs> 
Well, I, I had a little luck in the crap game. A little luck? Who do you mean playing with, Rockefeller? Well, shall we go in? Shall we go in, he says. Oh, oh. Wow, what a flick. What a flick. Take your hat, boy. Check me, honey. You can hang me up any place, babe. Say, honey, how do you like to marry me? But I've already got a husband. Well, I already got a wife. Oh, Mr. Beats. Good evening, sir. Hello, Joseph. You don't know me. Don't know you? You're Mr. J. Newport Beats. Please, I don't want anybody to know who I am. And don't give me a good table. Just give me the sort of table you'd give to anybody. But, Mr. Beats... Shh! Please, just call me Sailor. Yes, Mr. Uh, sailor. Hey, what are we waiting for? Come on, fellas. I've got a table. Let's go, fellas. This way, Mr. Sailor. Fellas, Fred, for the Right hey, what's the ceiling on that back roll of yours? Oh, I've got plenty, Benny. You want anything you like. Okay. Mutter me with mushrooms. Give me some pheasant's tails under glass. Yes. And you, sir? Tell me, what is this stuff? Escargot. Oh, escargot? It means snails. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You bring me a couple of play with and some beef stew to eat, huh? Uh, oui, monsieur. That's the limit. All right, Philip. Come in now. Philip. Well, where is he? Well, what are we waiting for? Uh, I think Philip stepped down the hall. Uh. Oh, hello. I didn't see you. I, I asked you to wait in the hall. Well, I just looked in here and I saw a saxophone, so I thought I'd try it out. Good horn. Oh. oh well, while Philip was in law school, he played in an orchestra. You know, some people play games and others play polo, and Philip played uh, saxophone. Mm. And do you think that makes him competent to watch over Jay? Well, Beaster and I are too old to go in the Navy. He looks healthy. Why isn't he in the Navy now? Oh, well, he's been doing some very important legal work for the government. And fortunately for our purposes, the project just failed. I mean, it was canceled. Uh, red tape. Uh, Philip, uh, Mrs. Neely and Mr. Neely. How you do? And Mr. Bates. Hello there. How do you do? Hope you don't mind my using your horn. Oh, not at all. Uh, we've been explaining to Mr. Bates that you and he are going to be shipmates. Do you want to go in the Navy, Mr. Norris? Well, He'd I... be delighted. Uh, delighted. Well, then I suppose I'll have to give in. But I feel awfully silly going off to war with a guardian. Well, uh, as long as I'm going to the Navy to take care of you, I think I ought to tell you that I can't swim. I can't either. Well, I guess the only thing for us to do then is just to uh, keep away from the water. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the tide that twinkle when the night begins. All the sailors sit around and watch the waves roll in. Uncle Sammy hit Miami. And he's got the situation well in hand. Uncle Sammy hit Miami. And the stars and stripes are flying in Miami. Uncle Sammy really started quite a boat down here. He's the man you gotta see to get a road down here. Uncle Sammy in Miami. And his relatives are getting mighty fair. You should see the toys that twinkle when the nights begin. Why the sailors sit around and watch the waves roll in. Uncle Sammy in Miami. From Dakota, Minnesota, every state you ever heard of has its quarter. Why, compared to Brooklyn, this is like another wild. I mean, mother keeps writing me. <laughs> Afraid that I'll get spurred. Uncle Sammy in Miami, and Miami's taking care of us. Uncle Sammy in Station at the best hotel in Miami. Say, when the Navy took this joint over, do you think they left any dames in the rooms? I don't know. Let's go find out. Now, why would they station us in a place like this? I'm sick of this soft living. Cheer up. Maybe after we finish our training, they'll send us to Iceland. All right, men, get your bags. Inside, on the double. Say, look, fellas, here comes company. Hi, sailors. Hi. Say, this is the kind of place I was built for. Did I ever tell you? 
I can't stand nothing next to me but silk. Yeah, when silk is next to me, I want something in it. Boy, this reminds me of home. Except, of course, at home, the cow shed's over there. Gee, what a place. I don't like it. Wonder who's in charge here. That's him over there, Chief Petty Officer. I've got to talk to him. Uh, pardon, sir, but do you think this is going to work out all right? What do you mean? Well, I mean, this place looks almost too comfortable. After all, aren't we supposed to get hardened up? Oh, I see. Well, we weren't going to start hardening you up until six bells. Oh. But seeing as you can't wait, I've got a nice big storeroom that needs to be swabbed. And this looks just like the crew that can do a real swell job. Swear to Hathaway! Fix that neckerchief. Take that cigarette out of your mouth. Now follow me and I'll show you where you get your gear. You're a very funny fellow. And when I get you alone, I'll have you in stitches. I may even break your funny bone. Get going, I said! Pardon me, old chap. Ain't you hardened up yet? Oh, how clumsy of me. I almost hit you in the face. Hey, kid, you better be careful. You get your feet wet, you're liable to catch cold. Hey, Phil, give us a hand, will you? You want a hand? I'll give you two. Hey! Now, Ella was a dancing girl that started getting fat, and every day brought three more pounds to Ella. Till one day she lost her job just because of that, then to make it worse, she lost her fella. So she sailed to Egypt to forget. How about they liked her so much that she's there yet? If you hear of a girl that can wiggle and shake till that makes you think of a noivous snake, whoa, that's Egyptian Ella. She weighs 220, but they don't care. They like them plenty that way out there. She's got the eye of all the camel encouragers. Why she doesn't dance with certain parts down by the river Nile, which make all the boys take their old sweethearts and throw them to the crocodiles. And every sheik in the audience rises and offers his love and tense, but they can't get the voice bass without giving no sir. Now she tried to kidnap her once, I am told, but she shook so much that he lost his hold. For 18 years I've been a head waiter, and this is the first time a customer ever gave me $20 not to recognize him and to give him a bad table. Who did that? Well, the little sailor over there, the one talking to the waiter. That is Jane Newport Bates, the wealthiest young man in America. He used to come here every season. It was before you worked here. But why doesn't he want anyone to know who he is? I don't know. Millionaires are crazy people. <laughs> Cigarettes, cigars. Cigarettes, sir. No, thank you. I don't smoke. I do. Well, go ahead, Benny. Have whatever you want. Give me a carton of dose. Me too, me I'll too. Take a glass. Go ahead. Well, that's all I have, but I can get some more. Never mind. Give me that box of cigars. Yes, sir. Would you care for a cigar? No, thanks. Keep the change. Thank you very much, sir. Honey, with a little encouragement, I'd have your name tattooed across my chest. There isn't enough room. There's five letters in my name. <laughs> uh, would you like some gum or some fruit drop? The fruit drop sounds good. What kind? Oh, any kind at all. These citrus hangs are awfully good. When I'm walking home at night, I'm usually alone. And I just enjoy these all by myself. You know, when you're alone and you have something to do, you don't feel so alone. You won't be alone tonight, dollface. I'll convoy you home. Hey, what about Don't me? Don't take the first offer, sure, baby. Sure, wait till all the bids are in. <laughs> you boys are all so flattering. I don't know which one to go home with. I'll tell you what. I'll pick a number from one to ten, and whoever guesses it gets to take me home. Now start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you must play fair. Four is your number. Five. That's it. I guess you get to take me home. That is, if you want to. Why, well, sure I want to. Hey, you'd have more fun with those citrus tangs. Well, shall we go? Oh, no, I don't get through work till 12. Oh, well, then I'll wait right here. See you at midnight. Who 
is your favorite pinup girl? Is it Pollock Goddard? Betty Hutton? You're probably a fan of Dorothy Lemour. If you haven't got a pinup girl, why couldn't I be yours? How would you like to take my picture? How would you like a souvenir? You can put it in the locket that you carry in your pocket when I'm not near. I'd love to have you have my picture. I'm looking at you each time you write. I'd love to be the lucky person that kisses you goodnight. Get your camera, Jack, and step right back while baby poses for you. Let the shutter click, that should do the trick. Cause your baby looks sweeter in 16 millimeter. It'll be signed with love and kisses to a guy in navy blue. How'd you like to take my picture? Oh, we're gonna take some pictures, huh? Hey, look, the joint's changing. It's magic. How about that? Well, what do you know? Wow! Oh, boy! Hold on! Now, so one of the Marines are the first to hit the beach. Hold still, Goldilocks. The best way, honey. Boy, this is living, huh? Hey, look at that! Oh! Hubba, 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 why can't we get something like this on our ship? You know something? Just looking at you, I can tell a ship's position. Yeah, what is it? Latitude 48, lingerie 32. Here we go again. What will they think of next? Haven't I seen her somewhere before? Sure, in the last issue of Esquire. Miss, would you turn this way, please? Can you picture me alongside of her reading and improving my mind? Yeah, vulture and culture. Hey, look, a bicycle built for two. See you later, honey. Oh, look at that. Well, this is only built for two. Hey, let the kid have his picture taken. Come on. Oh, okay, kid, come on. Here. Oh, <laughs> Hold it. Hey, he looks just like my old man. Hey, oh, oh, Quit panting, you're shaking my camera. Oh, brother, how'd you like to put in a day's work alongside a her? Hey, day nothing. Give me the late shift. Yikes! Isn't she got pretty hands? Always taking the fun out of life or covering it up. I don't care, I still. Hey, look at that, fellas. And it ain't even Saturday night. Wow, as soon as I get back from Tokyo, I'm gonna take up plumbing. I'd give a month's pay to be one of those bubbles. It'll be signed with love and kisses to a guy in navy blue. How would you like to take my picture? are old friends already, and I don't even know your name. Jay Bates. <laughs> That's a nice name. I'm Teddy Collins. What do you do? I'm a sailor. <laughs> I mean before. Oh, uh, I used to work in a factory. Uh, how long have you been at the Coral Club? Oh, just a few weeks. I came from Chicago. Oh, what did you do then? Same thing. I'm really a singer, but I've never had a chance. You see, if you haven't a lot of pull or a big name, you just don't get anywhere. And I have a mother to support, so I work as a cigarette girl. Your mother's pretty lucky to have a daughter like you. <laughs> well, this is where I live. Would you like to come up for a while? But what about your mother? Do you think we might wake her? Oh, oh, well, she's not here. You know, she's not very well, and I had to send her to a warmer climate. This is one of the warmest climates in the country. Oh. Oh, well, she needs altitude, too. Oh. So if you'd like to come up, why, we, you wouldn't awaken her.
Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, August. You're back early today, sir. I'll be back every day at this time. I'm on a new shift. Will you be sleeping in the daytime or at nighttime from now on? Nighttime. The staff will be pleased. We all admire your patriotism in working in an airplane factory, but it will be nice to get the house back on a normal schedule. What's that? Uh, your fiance is here, sir. Oh, good. Your cousin Edgar is here also. They're in the musical. Thanks. They've changed my shift. Well, uh, how are things at the plant? Shut up. Now, Jay, we were just dancing. You're not going to misinterpret a little thing like this, are you, cousin? Why didn't you tell me you were in love with Edgar? I'm not in love with Edgar. We were just having a little fun. You know how that music is. It stirs you all up. I told you to shut up. You're just like all the rest of them, Gloria. It's not me you care about. It's my money. Oh, Jay, stop being so old-fashioned. Oh. Of course I care about you. I'm engaged to you. Oh, no, you're not. You were. Well, you can't mean that. Oh, yes, I can. Well, this is the dirtiest trick I ever heard of. I ordered a mink coat yesterday. Maybe my cousin Edgar will pay for it. But, Jay, you know very well that every cent I have, I get from you. You can speak of that in the past tense also. What? But you can't do a thing like this so... So suddenly a person is entitled to a little notice. Then I will go on paying your allowance for the next 30 seconds. I'm afraid I won't be able to return your ring. I can't get it off my finger. If you ever need any money, I'm sure my cousin Edgar will find a way to get it off. But why do you have to do anything so drastic, Jay? Is it just because of Gloria? You should have been prepared. We never did like her. I always thought she was rather pretty. No. Sorry, dear. But, Aunt Martha, it's happened to me a dozen times. I'm sick of having people like me for just what they can get out of me. That's why I'm going into the Navy. But, my dear boy, how's this going to alter the situation? Well, in the Navy, nobody will know who I am. I'll just be one sailor among a lot of sailors. I won't be Jay Newport Bates. I'll be Seaman Bates. And if anybody likes me, it'll be because they like Seaman Bates and not my bank account. I think you're being very selfish, Jay. You don't seem to care how much you worry me. I beg your pardon, Mr. Bates, but your turn is here. Good evening. Good evening, Hello, Mr. Bates. Good evening, Jay. Well, Jay, there's a mountain of things to sign if you persist in going through with it. I can't for the life of me see why you're doing it. You're a vital war worker where you are. Vital? All I do is take bolts from one box and put them in another. Then I take washers and change them from one box to another. Then the nuts. A six-year-old child could do it. My cousin Edgar could do it. Very well, then. We've done the next best thing for you. We've arranged for one of the younger members of our firm, Mr. Beasley's nephew, to go into the Navy with you. With me? Why? Well, you couldn't go alone. Why not? Everybody else goes alone. Well, everyone else isn't the head of a financial dynasty like you are. You either own or control 27 corporations and three entire industries. But you handle all that. They're in your name, Jay. You absolutely must have a legal eye on you at all times. But that's just what I don't want. I want to be free. If I go in the Navy, I don't want anybody to know who I am. But nobody will. Now, Philip will be discreet. Uh, now, please, Jay, this is the least you can do for me. Well... Beaster, tell your nephew we're ready for him. Well, I don't think I'd bet it tonight. My liberty only lasts till one. Oh, well, it was awfully nice of you to take me home, Mr. Bates. I enjoyed it. You know... I have a little confession to make. Tonight, when you and the fellas were playing that game to see who'd get to take me home, well, I cheated a little. You did? You didn't win at all. But I wanted you to take me home. So I fibbed. Well, that's quite a compliment. He and some of those fellas were pretty good looking. Not as good looking as you. Uh, say, I might get off tomorrow night. Uh, you think I can call for you again? I don't know. Why not? You must think I'm awfully full. No, I don't. I think you're swell. Please? Well, all right. 
Good night. Good night, Miss Collins. I mean, Teddy. Yes. Minister One. That's the last time I let you out alone again. What, Phil? Wait till you hear I met her. I met the girl. I knew it. I never should have let you go. But she's sweet and beautiful and lovely, and, and she's good oh. to her mother. Oh. And she likes me for myself. To her, I was just one sailor at a table full of sailors, and I was the one she liked. Where'd you meet her? At the Coral Club. Was she a hat check girl or a cigarette girl? What makes you say that? Before I became a lawyer, I worked in a lot of nightclubs. And it sounds just like the pitch that sort of a girl would throw you. This was no pitch, and she wasn't that sort of a girl. Well, what does she do? Go around picking up sailors? No, she's, uh, she's sort of a, an entertainer. She's got a fine voice. My uncle's gonna love this. The first time I let you alone, you come back hooked. What, Phil? You're jumping to conclusions. She's a swell girl. Well, I'll drop down tomorrow night and take a look at it. Oh, no, you won't. I won't have that. Now, you stay away from her. I know what I'm doing, and I know she's right. Now, you leave her alone. Well, I'm only going to ask her a few questions. That'll offend her. She won't be offended unless she's trying to pull something. If you go down and bother that girl, I'll take my business away from Rutledge and Beaster and tell them it's all your fault. Now, how would you like that? Okay, you win. But promise me one thing, will you? Let me know before I do anything stupid like getting married. Oh, sure, Phil. I'll do that. And now that you guys have got everything settled, can us bridesmaids get some sleep? Da -da 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 -da. Quiet! Come on, Phil, hurry up. Uh, go ahead, I'll be right with you. Guess what happened? What's the matter? I lost my liberty. They claimed I didn't make up my bunk, but I did. You saw me. Sure I did. I'd burn a beat if I were you. I did, but it didn't do me any good. The awful part of it is I got a date tonight. See, that's tough. Want me to run over and tell her? No. You're supposed to stay out of this, remember? That was our agreement. Okay, you're just trying to do you a favor. I'll telephone. Well, I guess I'll take in a movie. So long. Got a nickel here someplace. Take your hat, sir. Only one, sir. Yeah, for the moment. Right this way. Others are all reserved. I beg your pardon, sir. Would you care for a ringside table? Well, I'd rather have a little information. Of course, sir. It's about this uh, Sue Thomas, the girl that sings here. What kind of a girl is she? Oh, very lovely, very refined, a perfect lady. Now tell me about her. And I want the real lowdown. Well, she's been working here seven weeks. Very popular. I don't want a financial statement. I just want to know about her personal life. There's never been a breath of scandal about her. Mm -hmm. Take another breath. I can't think of a thing. You're not trying. Well... <laughs> <clears throat> what is it? She's a vegetarian. Uh -huh. 
Well, I guess I'd better talk to her myself. Which one is her dressing? I guess I'm not allowed backstage. But this is strictly business. You gotta give me something for my money. I suppose I should have that. Uh, right this way, please. <laughs> Hello. Is that all you got to say to an old pal? That's all. 